record and we'll figure this out. Okay, good morning. I'm Commissioner Jill Carmi. We are here for unlawful detainer docket. As you can see, we have enabled closed captioning. For those of you who have the setting enabled on your Zoom, you will see it scrolling on the bottom. I see it on my screen. If anyone needs it, uh, it should be under the more options. What I'm going to do first, yeah, I believe Ms. Cotto has two matters uh, before she needs to leave for a juvenile case. So Ms. Cotto, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. And I actually sent you a chat. I couldn't see Mr. Kiernan on the chat. I didn't realize he was in the courtroom, but I did send him an email earlier telling him that I was going uh, to need to go first. So um, I don't have my document with me, but I know I'm here on... Um, the Titus matter, Sharp B. Titus. I don't have the docket with me though. Yeah. Sorry. So let me go. I'll find them. For the one that I have with you and Mr. Kiernan was on for review uh, 232 0110308, Maryland Garden Apartment LLC, and Angel Garcia. We have reached an agreement. Um, I'm going to be sending over for Mr. Kiernan's signature a order for writ. He sent me the order. Uh, we're working that out. Um, is your honor going to be available today for signatures? Ish. I'm available-ish today for signatures. Uh, what time would you anticipate? Kind of depends on how long my juvenile trial takes. I should be done by noon. Um, will you be available on Monday? I will be here all day Monday. I'm on uh, protection order docket all day, so I'll be in and out. Yes. It's better chance that I can get it on Monday. Mr. Kiernan has indicated that he, uh, but he needs to review my proposed order and I just haven't had a chance to get that to him. Yeah, I have no objections to that. I, I think we're we're in agreement with everything in, in the email. So I, I, yeah, I have no problem. Um, okay. So I will get that Sorry, over. Sorry, I, I was talking with my client for a second. Um, we're, if... I, I'm okay with striking this and just going with the agreements that we have, Ms. Cotto, is that? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I think that we've reached an agreement based on the emails and I'll just do the orders. And if there's some back and forth, Mr. Kiernan and I can take care of that today and Monday so we can get it for your signature on Monday. Okay. And if you need to note it on for something, obviously both of you know how to do that. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and just strike today. Okay. The Thank other you. matter, Ms. Cotto, the only other matter I show is the sharp construction B uh Titus 2320114208 do I have Marvin Titus or uh, is it Michelin or uh, Michelin Titus um I believe we should have had an NOA for that one um and I did reach out to Ms. Cotto I think we might have a settlement agreement that we might be able to to agree to so I'd ask for a one week continuance uh to try and settle the case and also just to um have time to engage with my client well Yes, we have been discussing it. So um, I wouldn't have a problem with setting it over one week. If we don't have an agreement, then we can be prepared, be prepared to argue next week. Okay. Um, I don't have the notice of appearance yet. I'm sure it's coming. So I didn't yet have you on this case. So I apologize. But um, I will set this to December 22nd at 9 a.m. Okay. Okay. And, and I um, uh, sorry. That's it. that's it. Yep. That's I think it so. for me. Yep. Great. Thank you for accommodating me. Thank you. Council. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Cotto. Have a good day. You and too. then um, I want, I need to take a case that's in the courtroom. Um, we have uh, some uh, hearing accommodations and Mr. Kiernan needs to take this case so then he can get back to his office for uh, other cases. So Mr. Kiernan, let's go ahead and take number four. I believe that's with Ms. Winkles. Is she present? Or maybe Mr. Nelson is covering today. I am. Um, Ms. Winkles okay. is ill. And so uh, we're asking for a two week set over if that's uh, if that can be done. 
Mr. Kiernan, what would be your position? Um, I guess I would not object to a two week set over. Um, I was under the impression that they were going to be striking this hearing. Um, so, um, as long as, yeah, um, that means that Miss Knowles still has a right to be in the house. We're, we're okay with that. Okay. And by I'm, sure, I'm sure it does. So, um, that's, uh, so if it, it, if it can be put over to, um, December 29th, that would be okay. great. So. Do you want to talk to her first? Yeah, can I talk to her? Yeah, we're just going to give Mr. Kiernan a minute to talk to her, his client. Yeah, no, I have to. Um, yeah, that's acceptable. Okay. So we'll have the parties back December 29th, 29th. 2023 at 9 a.m. Ms. Knowles, did this accommodation work better for you than Zoom? Yeah, but these died halfway through it. So I think I'm just being in the room is a lot better. A lot better. Okay. Yeah. Can you repeat the date and the time? Please? So yes, Friday, December 29th mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. And that would be in person too as well, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. All right, so we'll have you back. Um, anything else on this matter? Uh, nothing, Your Honor. Okay. Not here. Thank, thank you. you and Honor. thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to give us to help. Thank you. And then, Mr. Kiernan, do you want to stay in the courtroom for your other cases? So I am essentially going to be arguing a continuance on the two cases that I have. So okay. it'll be a shorter matter, but I don't know if you want to wait till after I get back. I because. For the more substantial matters, I would just as soon have my briefing in front of me in the internet. Okay. Let's do the continuance request that you believe may happen um, here. And then we'll, because I need some time. What's happening is there are two cases, the Walling case, Ms. Tideman that you're on, and the Morris case uh, that Ms. Baldwin is on. I just received briefing this morning. I haven't had a chance to look through it. My proposal was while Mr. Kiernan leaves the courtroom to go to his office, I would have a chance to read it. But Ms. Baldwin, what are your time constraints? My time constraints are as much of an issue. My issue is more, we've set that matter over twice and then the briefing is magically always Thursday at four uh, getting filed, but that leaves my client with no ability to respond. So it ends up being these one-sided hearings which aren't fair to my client. Um, but my proposal is in that matter, we set the case because they're demanding a jury trial. Um, I'm still entitled to my show cause hearing. So, oh. um, but but an actual hearing, not a one-sided one. Right. So my proposal would be to set to the 27th for the universal trial setting. So we get that trial setting done as soon as possible. And then to the 29th for the show cause hearing. Okay. Um, but because my client needs a reasonable amount of time to respond. Um, the declaration is not really directly related to the briefing. Um, and so it sort of is, but sort of isn't. So my client just needs time to be able to respond and have that hearing. So I think that that's a reasonable way of managing that. Um, Mr. Kiernan doesn't really need his notes to respond to those pieces. What? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have an objection to that. Um, as long as we get the show cause hearing, because I think there's some procedural problems with this. But um, yeah, I, I think that's just fine. I mean, because it it's either going to be dismissed or set to trial. Yeah. So let me ask you both. I, I think that's a great proposal, Ms. Baldwin, and with Mr. Kiernan's agreement. My only question would be, um, I don't, I wouldn't typically do the trial assignment setting before I've made a ruling on dismissing or finding facts in dispute to set for trial. Could we set you to the trial assignment, the first trial assignment after the 29th? Or do you, does your client have um, a big preference on getting in next week? Um, well, the 27th is two weeks now. That's fine. I don't mind because we may amend any way to add additional. Um, okay. So the third, that would take us to the third then. The third. Yeah. Does that work for you? Okay. It works for me. Yeah. Okay. So let's set this, we'll set this matter over for the show cause December 29th. I assume Mr. Kiernan, you don't anticipate filing additional briefing. No, this is, this is it for me. Okay. And so obviously, unless there's some additional brief I need to respond to, but I'll be sure to get that in beforehand. But yeah. I would imagine not. I don't have any more arguments. 
<laughs> okay. And then um, we'll just expect potentially a response from Ms. Baldwin if she reviews this and feels it's necessary. It gives the court more time to thoroughly review the briefing. So I think that's better for everyone anyway. We'll set this over to December 29th at 9 a.m. show cause. We will also go ahead and set you on the uh, Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024 trial assignment docket at one o'clock. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you both on that one. Thank you, Your Honor. And then um, do we anticipate, Ms. Teitman, I guess I'll touch base with you. Walling is the other case that I got briefing in that I have not read yet because it yeah, and I'm in a little bit of the same circumstance where I haven't really had a chance to talk to my client thoroughly about it. We also filed some things yesterday that I don't know if the court has had time to review as well. Um, the other kind of factor in this case, I guess, is that we have a second action that started with the same parties that I think will be on show cause for the 22nd. And my guess is that Mr. Kiernan, we provided him uh, copies of those uh, documents that were served. So my guess is it's going to be the same sort of issue that's raised, um, I would guess, in defense of that one. So I guess I would propose that we do both those hearings on the 22nd. What would be? Yeah, your... no, I mean, it's going to be the same defense um, regardless okay. for me. So I, I'm OK with that. I think and that... I, I wouldn't imagine that there would be substantially different briefing either. Okay. The only other question, and I'm sorry, I didn't hear all what the court said about the trial setting when Ms. Baldwin was talking about it. Um, I think I would like to get on a trial setting. My problem is we'll have that show cause on the 22nd. I'm out on the 27th, but I'm. They, we also had a jury demand in this one. So I'm just concerned about putting it out too far if the court is going to give us a trial. So is it possible for us to go on trial setting on the 20th? And then if the writ happens on the 22nd, we can just strike whatever trial date we've set or have this. My only, the, what I was saying in the prior case is it, um, I think I am the one doing that trial assignment docket, but not completely sure. And my fear is that we, if it is someone else, they would say, wait, there hasn't been any judicial finding that there's facts in dispute to go to trial. What are we doing here? Yes, so I, I Okay. I, what we'll do is maybe uh, on the 22nd, if we decide we need to go that direction, um, I can see if someone in my office would be able to cover it on the 27th. Okay. Do you want me to put you on the 27th trial assignment right now or just wait? Yeah, go ahead and do that. And if it okay. is, have anyone cover it, we're technically closed, but I think people are probably having other hearings that day. So I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Uh, so we will put this matter to December 27th, one o'clock trial assignment. Um, obviously somewhat contingent, we can readdress the issue on the December 22nd continued show cause hearing. Great. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So that takes, and I apologize to the clerk. I kind of took these uh, without identifying him. This relates to number one, Housing Authority, City of Kelso v. John Walling, 232-0105608. I try to be better about that. My apologies. Kind of had you running all around. <laughs> okay. Um, so Mr. Kiernan, then do you Yeah, I guess we're we just... we're pretty much done. Like I said, I'm I'm gonna be asking for a continuance on two cases. Okay. Um, we can argue that if you'd like. All right. So let's just move through our docket. So before we get to those, let me check in with the other attorneys online or folks online. Is anyone gonna be requesting a continuance, a strike, or a set over? <laughs> I have a matter with no response filed, no appearance. Is this the if... Marvin B. Butler? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and take that. Number 9 uh, Mr. McCurry, on behalf of Marvin Properties, do we have Ashley Butler or Christopher Chandler? <laughs> I did see someone log in under SB. I think they might be, well, I don't know who they are, to be frank. Is that Shyla Barnes? Yes. Okay. We'll come to your case shortly, ma'am. Thanks. 
Um, I don't have anyone in the waiting room. And my computer is thinking about letting me into the digital file. I do see the affidavits, the declaration. Mr. McCreary, what are you asking of the court today? Uh, requesting the court sign the order for the writ. Uh, I haven't received any response from any defendant. Okay. I see they are not appearing today. I see that um, service was proper. I will sign the order for writ. Thank you, Your Honor. And do we have that one? We do. Okay. Oops. All right. I have got that signed. Um, we'll move uh, kind of backwards on the docket number eight. Do I have uh, David Gallison with us? Uh, yes, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, David Lajan, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff, Quantum Residential, in this case. Yes. Um, so I'm just going to double check again. I did see your documents come in. Is Heather Zeal present? Okay, I don't see Ms. Zeal. I did not see anything filed formally with the court. There's no one in the waiting room and no one else in our courtroom. Mr. Gallison, what are you asking of the court today? Uh, this is a case where there was not personal service, so we would just be requesting an order for the writ on this one. I would note for the court that we did not receive any response from the defendant in this case either. Um, just gonna, I do have your original order here. I'll indicate did not appear, and I will sign that order. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Um, let's see. Ms. Sturm, is Ms. Sturm present? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. On number, I'm just kind of jumping all over our docket. <laughs> Num number two, uh, Michael Long, Suzanne Long, your clients be Shyla Barnes and Love Pryor. And I see Ms. Barnes, you are present. Can you hear the court? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is 232-010-7308. And Your Honor, we should have put an NOA in for this one as well. Um, I was just retained um, on Wednesday, I believe, um, and was able to get a retainer agreement on Thursday. Uh, okay. So I'd be asking for a one-week continuance. Uh, I understand that this has already been set over two weeks, um, but uh, we had some problems getting some financial information together to kind of figure out if a 4103 payment plan um, is feasible in this case. Um, we're trying to work that together, and I really want to, you know, give the uh, the defendants a little bit more time uh, just to get their documents together and provide them meaningful advice. Uh, again, this case was just assigned to me. Um, I understand uh, that there was already a two week set over, um, but we we just did not have enough time to communicate. Um, and I just asked for a one week set over in this case, and we'll we'll be sure to get it resolved next week. And Ms. Sturm, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I understand Mr. Kiernan's position. My clients would object to any set over. This case was filed November 3rd. They've had plenty of time before the first hearing to contact an attorney, an additional two weeks to contact an attorney, and they chose to wait until right before the hearing to do so. Um, so we would object to any set over. However, um, I understand his position. And if the court does set it over, we'd ask that it be one week and no further set overs be allowed. So the request would be set over to December 22nd at 9 a.m.? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that's the request. Um. Okay. I will grant the set over because uh, counsel is on board now. I do understand given prior statements in other cases on the record just about kind of the heavy workload here coming into the holiday season with a lot of these agencies. So um, I do find there's good cause to extend it one further week and we will plan to proceed on December 22nd at 9 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, I have, let me just get back to my Zoom room here. Uh, Ms. Radecki, I have you on number six, the 232 Zero one one four one 
08, your clients, the Powells. Then I have Abby Cooper and Justin Kelly. And your honor, I should have gotten an NOA. Did just none of my filings get in yesterday? Uh, I think that this one might have come in. Let me just check. Let me get there. No, it did not come in. Oh, but uh, it should be. <laughs> well, and I knew at the, um, when we were here on December 8, Mr. Brunetti had addressed the court stating that the parties who were present uh, last week stated that they had gone through screening, had been approved for representation. We didn't know specifically who their attorney would be. We assumed it would be you, um, but didn't want to make that bold statement on the record. Um, the request was a two week continuance. Initially, Ms. Uh, Radecki objected to that. And I set this for one week, but the statement made either by Mr. Brunetti or Mr. Kiernan was we'll, we'll try, but we may need two weeks. And it sounds like that is where we're at. What can you tell me? Yes. Um, I would just like to note in this case, there's a couple of things that make this a little more complicated than your average, uh, non-pay <laughs> case. Um, looking at the lease, which I received, this was originally a rent to own situation. So my clients might have some sort of equity or sort of ownership interest in this, um, I'd like to note that they're also asking for payments from October when, if you look at the previous case, my client was wrongfully evicted during that month. Um, and also uh, the non-payment kind of started as a result of a 10 day notice where they kind of stopped accepting rent. Um, so there's just a lot going on in this case, more so than a standard non-pay. And again, given the fact that this was kind of a rent to own situation uh, where my, my, my client might have some sort of ownership interest in this, even in the most remote way possible, I think that justifies me putting a little bit more time into this case, Your Honor. Okay. And I'll just pause for a second before I come to you, Ms. Radecki. I see that um, Justin Kelly and Abby Cooper are present. Can you all hear the court? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, we're just having argument on whether um, we need to set this over just for a little more time to um, get briefing on the specific issues in your case. So I've heard from your attorney. I understand your attorney's argument. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ms. Radecki on behalf of her client. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, I will just say this is a, a very straightforward case. This was not a situation um, where it was a, a, a rent to own. Uh, the lease is pretty clear on, on that matter. Um, and also the plaintiffs are entitled to recover rent for the premises that were habitated. Um, again, that would unjustly enrich my, cli or, um, my clients if they were permitted to stay for free um, just because there was another eviction action um, going on at the time. And also I will just reiterate too, um, as Mr. Kiernan pointed out, there, this original case started August 24th, um, the, the one before this. Um, it did proceed for several months, and then now we're at this point. Um, this has already been delayed quite a bit. The outstanding balance for their account at this current moment is $21,600. Um, and again, the the amount will rise $2,700 on January 1st. So um, there is not any reason for further delay Um it's a very straightforward case. It's a 14 day pay, very pay or vacate notice properly served. Um, there's no basis to continue it um, past this matter. They did not pay their rent. Um, they did not comply with the 14 day notice. They did not vacate. Therefore we are entitled to the writ. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Radecki. I appreciate that. Um, the first hearing in this matter was December 8. And it was the first time that um, I'm frankly, one thing that impressed me was the defendants had already been screened and been approved for representation. We don't see that often. Usually they come to their first appearance and we have to wait for them to even start the screening process. So um, I only gave one week because there was objection to a two week, but specifically put in my notes that more time may be needed. I think that's accurate. I think, you know, typically two weeks on a, as an attorney, jumping onto a brand new case makes a lot more sense. And sometimes I think that's even probably not enough. Um, but I will say there is good cause to set this case over one more week to the December 22nd docket at 9 a.m. My sincere hope, absent some new filings that folks may want to respond to, is that we can proceed on the merits December 22nd. 
Uh, that should work for me. Um, okay. And uh, Mr. Cooper, uh, could you please give me a call um, in the next few hours? Yeah, um, Abby Cooper. Yeah, I can do that. Mr. Mr. Kelly, please stay in touch with your attorney, ASAP, okay? Yes, ma'am. You know, if I may just say one final thing for the record. Yes. Um, so I know that uh, the court just indicated that um, they were pretty proactive in their case. I think that that was um, due to their prior case. I don't necessarily think that it was independent of this, um, but I just wanted to make that um, statement for the record. Yeah, and I'd just like to note that I've had them for a 10-day, I believe a three-day, and then a 14-day, a which all have since been dismissed. So um, my client, you know, obviously has been vindicated on all of those, and I can only deal with the issue in front of me if there's other issues. I, I can't obviously do a holistic approach, obviously, when I'm representing these people for only two weeks. Yep. Understood. And uh, Ms. Radecki, thank you for noting that for the record. We will make sure that gets into the minutes. Anything else on this matter? Not from plaintiffs, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you. And then in iPad booth number two, what is your name, sir? You might have to unmute. That's Mr. Walling. Oh, um, the, oh. and I can, I can, we don't need to deal with that. That could be an issue. <laughs> I'll, I can talk to him. <laughs> Mr. Walling, can you hear the court? Okay, we can't hear you. You are muted. But just he had st some developmental yeah. problems. Stay so stay that's, yeah. Stay where you are, sir. Just stay right where you are. And your attorney, what? your attorney will come talk to you. Yeah, he's not gonna figure that out. <laughs> okay. Did we miss any cases? Okay, um, we'll go ahead.